Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to do just kind of a quick review for you guys on the Nacto City e-bike. Um, I hadn't seen too many reviews on it, so I thought I'd just kind of give you guys my two cents, just kind of based on my experience and let you know what I thought about it. Um, should mention too, real quick, that I actually found a pretty good deal on this bike, and I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can check that deal out if you're interested in picking one up for yourself. So with all the flood of e-bikes on the market now, um, everybody and their brother in China seems to be making a version of an e-bike. It's kind of hard, um, at least when I was doing the research initially, to really decide on one. Um, there's just so many options out there, which ones are good, which one's not. Um, I spent a good month checking out e-bikes um, in fine detail before going with this one and I guess if you kind of want the short version of it I'm extremely happy with it and I highly recommend it. So why do I say that? Um, several reasons actually. First thing I want to talk about and kind of the most important thing on an e-bike is the battery and the motor. Um, those are the two by far most expensive things to replace if anything goes wrong with them and those two things really determine the functionality, the performance, and just the overall how good the e-bike is. First, let's talk about the motor. It's 250 watts, which is not the most powerful in the world. However, surprisingly, this thing will do 20 to 25 miles per hour. And I'm a pretty heavy guy, I'm about 230 pounds, and it will do 20 miles an hour, no problem. Surprising amount of acceleration too. Um, yes, it doesn't accelerate as fast as a 500 or 1000 watt e-bike, um, but it's pretty dang close. And you also have to keep in mind the price of this e-bike as well. If you're comparing this to a bike like a Rad Rover or something like that, um, keep in mind that you can buy two of these and still have money left over for the price of one single Rad Rover. Is the Rad Rover worth the extra money? In my opinion, absolutely not, having driven both. The motor itself is made from a Chinese company called Bafang. Um, don't let that put you off. Bafang uh, makes some of the best motors in the world. Even if you get into, like I've been on Reddit and guys who build their own e-bikes, a lot of them use Bafang motors because they're actually very, very well made. Um, they're the number one motor electric motor manufacturer in the world and they don't make bad products. This is a 250 watt brushless Bafang motor, very good quality. Second of all is the battery. It took me a little digging to find out uh, some information on the battery of this bike. It is not a name brand battery per se, it is a Chinese proprietary brand battery. However, it does use Panasonic cells inside, which is the most important thing, and that's what matters really. Um, just to give you an idea, the Teslas, uh, uses Panasonic batteries for the inside. Now they are a different battery, but they're still made by Panasonic, so the battery is actually very good quality. It's 36 volts and 10 amp hours. This makes sense when it's paired with a 250 watt motor. There's no need to have a 48 volt uh, battery with a 250 watt motor. It's really just overkill. So that's another reason why they could save money, or you could save money really, by buying this bike. Um, by getting a little slightly uh, lower voltage battery. But like I said, the acceleration is very good on this bike and it will do 20 miles an hour right out of the box. You can, um, you can go into the menus and change it. There's a little thing you have to do, um, but you can up the top speed to about 25 miles per hour also. 10 amp hours, um, the range on this bike if you're using 100% throttle, which by the way, this bike has a throttle, um, so you don't have to pedal it at all if you don't want to. If you're using just pure throttle, about 20 mile range. If you're not going full 20, full speed, full throttle the whole time, you could probably eke out about 25 miles of range. And if you're using the pedal assist on it, and I'm, when I say use the pedal assist, I mean pedal extremely lightly. It, it almost, your feet just naturally want to pedal the bike. Even if you're not putting much effort in, it does make a big difference on the battery. If you're just doing a very, very basic pedal assist, you can easily get 40 miles of range. The bike itself is very solid. Um, good wheels, good tires. The frame is very well welded uh, together, 
One thing that is nice about this bike, if you are using it for its intended purpose, which is street riding or city riding or commute riding, you're going to be on pavement all the time. And one thing that's nice about this bike, as opposed to some of the other fat tire e-bikes, it has the real thin tires on there. You get much better range and much better acceleration and um, because you're not fighting against those fat tires. The downside to that though is you really can't take this bike off-road. I mean you could do some basic dirt trails and stuff but nothing with really any bumps or rocks or anything but that's really not what this is intended for. It comes with everything you need out right out of the box. Uh, the battery, the battery charger, the toolkit to finish the assembly on the bike and the bike comes about 90% assembled right out of the box. The only thing you need to put on is the front tire and the handlebars which is extremely easy to do and will take you probably 15 minutes tops. Uh, next thing, the Shimano gear system on this bike, uh, or rather the gear system on this bike is a Shimano, which is good because Shimano make really good gears um, and hubs and shifters. Now it's obviously not their highest end Shimano gear set, but it's a pretty dang good one uh, nonetheless. And for the purposes of this bike, which is not made for off-road use, it will handle anything you're going to throw at it 100%. Um, as far as the brakes go, it does have V-brakes on the front and rear. You're not getting um, disc brakes with this bike. However, for city riding, disc brakes just weigh more. They're a more complicated system and they're more expensive to put on the bike. So you really don't need them to be honest with you. Uh, these, this bike does stop very quickly. And since disc brakes really don't make a big difference unless you were to get hydraulic disc brakes. Most bikes that come with disc brakes will have mechanical disc brakes um, and it really doesn't stop much quicker mechanical disc brakes versus a standard V-brake. It's only when you need to get it into hydraulic disc brakes that you really notice a difference and there's no way you're going to get a bike at this price with hydraulic disc brakes on it. But like I said for city riding, street riding, this thing stops exceptionally fast. You wouldn't need anything more than it. The seat itself is actually pretty comfortable right out of the box. Um, it's kind of a standard cruiser seat, but it does have a pretty nice spring in it. Um, now you can always, obviously comfort is very subjective in bikes. You can always put an aftermarket seat on it if you want. Um, and the bike actually does come with a basket for the front, which is kind of nice, uh, nice touch they give you a nice woven basket to hold stuff while you're going. It does come with a rear rack as well, so if you want to add a rear rack, you can find those pretty cheap on Amazon now um, to hold even more stuff if you want. But yeah, overall, I really like this thing. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a, an extremely good value uh, e-bike that will go a long way and uh, go very quickly. And a lot of people don't realize how fast 20 miles per hour is on a bike. Um, because you're used to riding in a car and you think, well, 20 miles an hour isn't that fast. It is scary fast uh, to go 20 miles an hour on a bike until you get used to it. And even then, um, even driving around my sub, I don't even feel comfortable really going 20. Um, I usually keep it around 10 or 15 and it feels like you're flying. But yeah, highly recommend this. For the money, I really didn't think it was going to be near as good as it was. Don't spend $1,500 on an e-bike when there are bikes at this price uh, that are this good. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and have a great day.